Good morning. So thank you all for, uh, for being here and your passion in data scientists. And uh, what I want to do this morning is take you through how we apply data science in the world of healthcare and, and why that's really important. And also the kind of skills that are required for us to truly make a difference in that industry. So I run uh, the data and analytics and the Leonardo business at SAP. And at SAP, we look at truly driving a higher purpose to make the world run much better. And we can do only do this by gleaning insights from data and then translating those insights into actions. In my role at SAP, we help customers across multiple sets of industries, and in particular, our health focus is very critical. It is very critical because in healthcare, the power of digital technologies to make an impact is significant. And as a result, the power of data science to make an impact is really significant. So in our daily lives, we see that technology has a truly profound impact. And if you look at some of these sectors, if you look at education, over 25% of college students are enrolled in online courses. And so technology has dramatically simplified their access to knowledge. If you look at relationships, we are more connected than ever, right? And we stay in touch with people that we haven't seen in ages. And a very startling statistic, at least for me, was over 90% of single adults in the US have tried online dating. And the way we work is changing. And why is it changing? The way we work is changing because automation, artificial intelligence, robotics, has completely changed the labor market. And we see as a result that 30% of productivity is going to be driven in the next 10 years. This is really significant change. And it's significant change because with the advance of technology, with the advance of data modeling, with data science, we're really going to be augmenting the human workforce. Transportation, we all know that Uber has completely disrupted the taxi industry. With 40 million riders across 77 countries. The point is that digital technologies is having an undeniable impact on our lives. And it's made every day of our lives easier. But now the impact is going to be even more significant. So at SAP, we've seen the forefront of many of these changes, right? And the forefront of these changes really happen in many dimensions. Basically, they happen in a dimension where some examples where we have lampposts with sensors that are transmitting the ability for us to capture data. And as a result, what we can do is we, we capture and improve the air quality and the pollution control. Another example is uh, we've had a partnership with a Japanese telecommunication company where we actually measured drivers' biomedical data and signals, including posture, and so as a result, this added GPS location. And with the right data science models and the data science impact, we got a comprehensive safety analysis. And that as a result, we were able to reduce the driver fatigue and we were able to detect the safety of these solutions all in real time. So we're using the data to truly transform this type of an impact. But the point is, are we seeing that same transformational impact in healthcare? And there are a few statistics that I'd like to share. We see one in six deaths is caused by cancer. 422 million people have diabetes and 50% are just gone undiagnosed. Cardiovascular disease is, continues to be one of the leading causes of death global, globally. And chronic diseases like diabetes really account for the top 10 cause of death. 
But now we're starting to see digital innovation and the impact of data and analysis growing in healthcare. We're not seeing the full scale impact of digital technology yet. Now, the question is, why? First of all, the healthcare industry, it rewards treatment today and not necessarily prevention. So new therapies, drugs, medical devices, but no equal investment in wellness, in being able to focus in fighting fires instead of preventing them. And this is where data science is going to have a huge impact. We focus a lot on the healthcare segment on hardware and less on software. And hence, we're going to see a massive change. We have sophisticated devices for diagnostics, but still an immature infrastructure perhaps to capture and manage data. And finally, the systems today are disconnected. We have fragmented data. The data is in silos through the entire value chain of health providers. And in the context of a very regulated industry, what happens is this limits collaboration. So one of our missions at SAP is to enable the healthcare organizations to deliver value-based and personalized care through this entire digital transformation. And we integrate and mine the disparate sources of data by evol evolving it to a very, very robust platform. And to ensure that we've got a single source of truth such that we can enable distributed and federated data queries. So we connect the data through our in-memory databases for computing, and as a result, it allows us to apply data and decision science, and as a result, have improved decision making. And very importantly, correlate actions from these insights. So we leverage the best practices of real-world evidence through data management and engagement of solutions. We allow us to safely integrate these disparate sources of data, not in all cases necessarily moving the data, but instead in distributing these queries to allow for the data modeling, to allow for the gleaning of the insights. And as a result, through this process, of deep integration of data and through the process of real-time analytics, we contain the costs. And so what's very important in the model is that we need to extend the existing assets and we need to ensure that through these technologies, we're becoming real-time and responsive in how we glean the insights from this data. Now with healthcare, we see that it's a very distributed system involving highly sensitive data. And so a centralistic collection and analysis of data is not always feasible. So as a result, we have to respect the patient privacy. Players want to secure their data such that they can monetize the different IP through all parts of the healthcare value chain. And different players might have different interests financial incentives, different ways of using the data. And therefore, there's multiple standards, multiple nomenclatures, semantics, ontologies. So instead of centralization, we have focused on a federalist broking and sharing of certain slices of data. So a federated brokerage model such that the data can be integrated and very importantly, glean insights from the data and being able to take the right types of action. The rights to control the data, which is also considered as a currency of the future. As in all networks, the more of the players that join in with the data, the more powerful, the more rich the data is going to be. And as a result, the more accurate and preventive insights that we can glean from this data. So, Earlier, I discussed the current challenges 
in healthcare today. But let's illustrate this with an example of cancer, right? Why cancer? We're all touched by cancer ourselves, either directly or indirectly. And when you suffer from cancer, you hope that the doctors are basing their recommendations on the best trial results, combined with external data on how patients like you have been diagnosed and allowed for treatment and prevention. But in most cases, the decision-making has not been very data-driven. In fact, only 5% of cancer patients enroll in clinical trials. So as a result, the doctors have to find and extrapolate the studies and the findings and very importantly rely on their own experience with limited data sets. But we can do better by defining this notion of value-based care. And this has a strong following because healthcare consumers want to connect patients. They want to connect patients with patient outcomes. So consumers are expecting much deeper insights. They are expecting deeper insights from their healthcare providers for their specific health issues. And I'll give you some highlights from our journey to transform cancer treatment with digital technologies. The journey starts with Charité. Charité is one of our largest university hospitals in Europe, where we created a very integrated and fully granular data set, including all patients, where they've been treated with a simple and a very clean graphic user experience that allows providers to explore the data set in a very easy and a very intuitive way. And the first step was to normalize and to compile this data in one place and then being able to glean the insights with the initial tools in a very structured way. And then the journey continued with NCT in Heidelberg where we used our technology to identify tumor markers from the doctor's notes. And while sitting with a patient, physicians can now both search local cases and they can also search history as well as tumor registries to identify groups of similar patients who had previously been treated with their specific sim symptoms in order to understand the outcomes of their various stages of the disease and the impact of these technologies in a preventive way. And the next, we helped the American Society for Clinical Oncology here to develop Cancer LinQ, a tool that integrates the data from over a hundred clinics and over a million patients to make oncologists allow them to make better decisions with the right type of treatment decisions as well. And here, Cancer Link you, it assembles the data that has been aggregated across distributed clinics, distributed patients, as a re result then applies real-time analytics to be able to allow for preventive and proactive gleaning of insights. And with Gustav Rusi, which is one of the premier cancer research institutes, we're providing access in this case to both clinical and genomic data from more than 300,000 patients. And so we began a pilot and as a result, use these insights from the stored data to glean the longitudinal view of patient records and being able to do forward looking and predictive analysis as well. So what we're seeing with this type of access to federated distributed data is the power of a network-driven, data-driven strategy for collecting, managing, and gleaning insights from this data. And we're seeing healthcare organizations now being able to rise above their individual institution to deliver exponential value to patients globally. And this is just one example. 
So what we can extract from this journey that we can apply to healthcare holistically. First, break that status quo, right? By committing to a data-driven decision-making. And how do you do this? You need to respect data, aggregate that data, and treat data as a first-class data asset. From there, it's very important to establish a data governance framework so that the data is very formally, it's consistently and securely managed across the enterprise and across the network of data. And then you need to connect all of this data. You need to connect the data irrespective of the source and the format of the data. This includes health-related data beyond just the clinical environment, but health-related data from external data sources as well. And then, very importantly, you need to democratize that data. What do we mean by that? We mean as we want to be able to make it available through the organization to foster a culture of data-driven decisions. Now, while data is the what to focus on, technology is the how. And the takeaway that you don't need to necessarily replace your IT infrastructures. However, you are able to leverage and to extend them. And so your infrastructures, as you design them in these environments to allow for this open networked data, infrastructures have to be open such that they are extensible. And they can be integrated with your data in the current stack, or they can be integrated with data externally as well. Infrastructures have to be scalable, such that you can scale to networked pods of information. And very importantly, it must be real time. It must be real time so you can glean these insights and very importantly, take action from these insights as well. Finally, it's so important to think about the outcomes. When we apply data and decision science, the outcome is pivotal. And so in this case, put the patient in the center of this transformational journey. And you start with the patient and then work backwards. That's where we'll get the power from these results. And we get the input from all the key constituents and finally create a very positive and an immersive patient experience. The quality of care is important. And as a result, we want to ensure that the quality of the patient experience improves dramatically. So when we look at all of these immersive experiences that are now possible, they are possible because we can connect the data. They're possible because we can glean insights from the data. And a quote from Steve Jobs was included in his biography. You all are very familiar with it which is he's a true innovator and he's regarded as the most creative, but he also battled cancer. And especially on his term as the intersection, the biggest innovation in healthcare will be born from collaboration, where we embrace this concept of collaboration. It's not just about transforming our industry, but it is about making an impact on people's lives. It's about truly changing that customer experience. And so as we look at the power of data and decision science, and as we look at the power of what's possible with the technologies today, the ability for us, when we embed these capabilities, of machine learning, big data, analytics, it allows us to reap unprecedented value from data. And therefore, it allows us to do this with new and innovative skills of data and decision science. So I encourage you all to learn more about it, to get into the details, and you'll have a significant impact on people's lives. Thank you.